My name is Tanya. I'm a professional sculptor with over 20 years experience. You may have seen my work in the Mini Time Machine Museum in Tucson, Arizona. I've also been featured in various blogs, online posts, social media, and published in the Book of Mini. I love creating adorably cute food jewelry, and I'm here to teach you how to do the same. These series of courses specialize in teaching you how to create high quality polymer clay food jewelry that you can gift to a family member, friend, or even sell and make a profit. This course will take you step-by-step step through the making of realistic frosting and using it to create your very own cupcake pendant. Just like the one I'm wearing here. So if you're ready to have some fun, let's get started. The first thing you're going to need is some polymer clay. I prefer the Fimo Soft brand because when you bake it, the colors don't change in the oven, so you can make sure that your colors match exactly what you want them to be. Next, you're going to need some translucent liquid Sculpey. This is what we're going to use to make the frosting. You're also going to need a mixing bowl for the frosting. Um, I prefer a glass mixing bowl. I think it's a lot easier to work in and getting the clay out when you're all finished mixing. And then to mix it with, I actually use an espresso tamper. It just saves your hand so much pain and struggle when you're trying to mix that tough polymer clay. You'll also need a single-sided blade for cutting clay pieces and a soft plastic container that you can store your polymer clay frosting in when you've got it mixed. Now I like using um, a cotton towel to get the pigment from the clay off of my hands. I just think it picks up really well and it's essential when you're going from one color to the next. So I like to work on a self-healing cutting mat whenever I'm working with polymer clay. I bought this years ago from Staples, I think it was like 20 bucks. Um, it has a really nice ruler on it, a grid system, and it's just a nice working surface when you're working with polymer clay. However, I like to keep my cutting mat super clean. So you'll never see me cut directly on this mat when I'm working with clay, because otherwise the pigments from the clay are going to embed into the mat. Instead, what I like to use is parchment paper. You can buy this at any grocery store, it's inexpensive, and when you're done with it, you can crumple it up and throw it away. But it's gonna protect my mat, and it's gonna keep it clean, and give it a longer life, um, and just make it a better working surface. When it comes to making the cupcake base, I like using a two-part silicone mold. This is oven safe. All you do is create your cupcake base once, bake it, and then create your silicone mold by mixing 50-50 increments of the silicone, Put it over the little base that you made and let it sit for like 20 minutes and then pop your cupcake piece out and you've got this awesome little mold that's oven safe. You can use it again and again. Um, it's just been a fantastic tool, especially if you're going to make a lot of cupcake jewelry, you don't want to have to try to make all those little indentations over and over again. That's going to get super tedious and you're probably not going to want to make cupcake jewelry anymore. So definitely recommend getting a silicone material and just create a mold for the base. And that way you can have more fun working with, the, to me, the fun stuff, which is the frosting. So I like to make multiple molds if I'm going to make jewelry in bulk. And here's some photos that show you all the different molds that I've made for the cupcake bases. And it just makes it so much quicker and easier if you wanna do, you know, like 10 cupcakes at a time. You just pop all the clay in the molds, pop it all in the oven once, and you're ready to just start frosting cupcakes and move on. Another tool that you're going to need is the pasta maker. This is how you can get evenly flat pieces of polymer clay, which you can then punch with cutters. Um, just a really great tool, and especially for the cupcake jewelry. I currently live in the Sonoran Desert, so dust is just terrible here. So one of the things that I've decided to do to help my pasta maker survive living in the desert is I use a shower cap. I cover it over my pasta machine and it just helps seal in the rollers so that they aren't all fluffy with dust when I go to work with my polymer clay again in the future. When working with the hardware, you're going to need a couple of tools. So I've got two types of pliers. One's just a regular flathead, the other's needle nose. And you're also going to need a jump ring when you attach the um, hardware to the cupcake. So you're also gonna need some round nose pliers as well as wire cutters. 
And then you're also going to need some small pieces of wire. For baking the cupcake, you'll need a cookie sheet that is no longer used for food. And I love these little ones. They were like five bucks on Amazon and they are super useful. I've got these finished cupcakes here and you'll see that there's some little polka dots on the bottom. To create those polka dots, you'll need some paint as well as a dotting tool. So this is an example of what a dotting tool looks like. I prefer mine to have uh, metal hardware because it's so much easier for cleanup when you're done. When it comes to the paint, I prefer using acrylic paint, but not all acrylic paint is created equal. I love the uh, Blick brand of paint. You can see it here in the little tube. Um, this one's pink. I've got a bunch of colors. They even have like sets that you can get with 25 colors in them for a really cheap price. But what I like about their paint is it's not runny. It's super thick. And when you dot it onto the clay, it just has a really nice weight to it that looks really high quality. Of course, when you go to bake your clay, you need an oven to bake it in. And this is my little confection toaster oven. It's just a Breville Smart oven. Again, another really great deal on Amazon, but it works really great. It's small and it just does the job. Another tool that I really like to use is a decorating wheel. You'll see this in cake shops, but it works great for polymer clay. But I never work directly on the wheel's surface. I'll use a piece of cardboard first. Then I'm going to add a piece of parchment paper. And then when I go to put it in the oven, all I do is just slide the transparent parchment paper off of the cardboard onto the cookie sheet and it's good to go into the oven. I also like using these cupcake liners. If I'm gonna be working with sticky, liquidy clay and using toothpicks and stuff like that, um, I like that you can just throw all your stuff in there and then chuck it when you're done. So we're almost done talking about tools. We talked about silicone molds. I've got my sprinkles there with a little scoop. You're gonna need a good pair of tweezers as well as a heart-shaped Kemper cutter and some toothpicks that's gonna help you apply the frosting. You'll also want to have a very small fine tip brush for applying the glaze. And this is the glaze that I prefer to use, um, Deco Art, Triple Thick. It just does a really great job. Now let's start assembly. To begin, we're going to start making the cupcake base. So I've got my silicone mold, and what I'm going to do is take some brown polymer clay. I decided I wanted to make a chocolate cupcake. Um, so I'm going to take some brown polymer clay, and again, I like using Fimo Soft. That's just because it does a really great job. It's soft to begin with, it's not all crumbly, um, it's easy to work with. You don't need a whole lot of kneading time to make the clay soft and pliable. And when I pick out my colors, whether I've mixed them or picked them out directly from the package, um, I know that it's gonna retain that same color in the oven. I'm not gonna have this horrible color after it's baked. So all you do is just press the clay into the little mold like I'm doing here. And then you'll see that I have kind of a top. There's a lumpy top up there. Now we don't want that. We want this to be completely flat. So I'm gonna use my little blade and very carefully, I'm just going to cut around the top and remove that excess clay. Now you'll see that it's separated a little bit. That's okay, just push it back in so that it seals all the way around because you don't wanna have all that open space. You wanna make sure that you get a really nice clean mold out of this. Okay, so this looks good and it's ready to go into the oven. So um, you probably only need to bake it 15 to 20 minutes, but it's whatever your polymer clay package instructions state. And then I like placing it on a piece of parchment paper before I put it on the cookie sheet. Now in our next lesson, we're going to start making the frosting while this is baking. Let's start making the frosting which is my favorite part. So we've got some pink clay here. We definitely don't need this much. We're not making a super huge batch. So I just wanna cut the clay and pop it in the bowl. And what I could do is just start working with it from there. Some people, that's what they do. They'll take their liquid Sculpey and pour it in. However, that's not what we're gonna do. Let's give ourselves a break and make this easier. 
What we want to do is knead the clay first. You really want to get heat running through the clay. You want to get it as pliable as possible so that when you go to mix it, one, it's easier on your hand, and two, you'll just get a better mix. It's going to be smoother and creamier and just give you a better look when you're all said and done. You can see that while I'm kneading it, I'm folding it into itself. Normally when you're mixing clay, you really wouldn't want to do that because you're going to start putting some air bubbles in there. But when you're making frosting, it really doesn't matter. You mix it however you want. The whole goal is to just get it soft and pliable and easier to work with. So we've almost got the clay to where we want it to be. You can see that it's starting to get really flexible, it's bendy, um, a lot more pliable. It's a far cry from what we started with. It'll bend, but then break like that. So what, what I'm gonna do is just knead this a little more. I think we can get it maybe a little bit softer and that'll make it much easier when we're actually turning it into frosting. Okay, so we've got the clay right about where we want it to be. It's really soft, really pliable. So what I like to do is break it into small little pieces. I know some polymer clay artists, they'll just throw the whole lump in there and drizzle TLS all over it. But I found it actually works a lot better if you break it into small little pieces and then pour the TLS over it because it gives it time for the two products to connect. And that's really what you want. You want these two products to connect so well that they're actually going to become one new product. So the way the TLS container is designed, in my opinion, can be quite challenging. You could sit here for a really long time squeezing this bottle, hoping that you'll get a tiny little drizzle out. Um, save yourself the time. I just you know you can try this but it just doesn't seem to like to come out so what I like to do is just unscrew the entire top because you're gonna need quite a bit of TLS to get the job done so you can see it all in there it's kind of goopy and then squeeze it from there but you need to be careful at this point because you don't want to get too much TLS your ratio should actually be 60% FEMO 40% TLS that's really important 60% FEMO 40% TLS that ratio is what will enable you to get frosting that allows you to mold with it and at the same time look realistic and it also keeps well for years and years. It's like my own little secret recipe that I'm sharing with you guys. So now we're going to put the LS away. I never like leaving it open. It's not that it'll dry out. I just don't want bits of other stuff to fall in there. And now we're going to use our espresso tamper. This has been the greatest tool I've ever discovered, ever, ever, ever. <laughs> All you do is just push it down and mix it around in the bowl. You can see that the way I'm holding it in my hand, it allows me to have a lot of control and it also will save your hand from a lot of pain in the future. I've seen some artists use little tiny metal tools that you, know, you can buy that they're for molding clay, but really not a great mixing tool and if you're gonna make frosting in mass batches you do have to think ahead about the longevity of your tools that you were given such as your hands and if you start using tools that really cause you to do repetitive motion in an unsafe way and when they say unsafe I mean it's putting extra strain on tendons and muscles that really shouldn't have that strain there, then you're gonna end up with some, some problems. So it's important to think ahead about anything you do that's going to be repetitive, that you wanna have the right tools so that you're not only doing it to get the job done in a great way so that you have a nice result, but also just to protect your hands and your joints because that's the greatest tool that you have when you're working with clay. 
So I'm mixing this and you can see it's starting to get a little gooey. It's still super lumpy. So definitely not where we want it to be yet, but that's okay. It's, it's not gonna look great in the beginning. You could end up mixing for quite a while depending on the size of your batch. When I do big batches, it'll usually take me 20 to 30 minutes of just mixing. But for this batch, it'll probably only take, you know, maybe five or 10 minutes to, to mix it all together. So throughout the mixing process, I like to test it. Test it for doneness, as they say in baking. And uh, we're making frosting, so let's test the doneness. You can see that it's sticky, which is good. That's what you want, but you can also see it's still kind of lumpy. So we could do better. We can get this a lot creamier because that's, that's really the key. So I don't like working with sticky fingers. So this is where my cotton towel comes in really handy. I can just wipe my fingers off and get back to work. So this is looking a lot better. So let's check it for doneness now. So you see how it's, it's almost moldable, but it's still sticky. And it's got those little strings. The strings are kind of your key. So as, as long as you've got all the lumps out and you've got those strings, then you are good to go. This frosting is gonna make excellent frosting for cupcakes, cakes, whatever you want to put it on. I just wanted to show you a close-up shot of the frosting so you can really see how creamy you want it to be. So now that the frosting is complete, we need to put it into an airtight container where it will be safe and then we can start using it. I like using this little metal sculpting tool. It has a nice curved edge. It came with a bunch of fun little attachments, some dotting tools and stuff. Um, but for this, we're gonna use the curved edge piece. And if you mix your clay using a tamper, um, it does a really good job getting around the edges and just scraping all of the frosting off and putting it into the little airtight container. So once I've got a big enough glob to put into the container, to get the clay off of the glob, you don't wanna use your fingers because it's just gonna stick back to your fingers something terrible. So I like using these little, they're just the little round ed edged toothpicks and they do a pretty good job. It'll just scrape it off without really attaching right away. That way you can get it off the metal tool and into the container. So now that I've got most of the clay off of the tamper, I wanna clean that. And that's where that white cotton little towel comes in great because you can just run it over it and it just picks up all those little bits and cleans it off perfectly so that it's ready for the next time you wanna use it.
So at this point, you might be looking at this bowl thinking, goodness, Tanya, why are you trying to get every tiny, tiny little bit out of this bowl? Well, after you spent 20 to 30 minutes mixing this, you realize how much work goes into making it and you don't want any of it to go to waste. And as you can see, there's actually a lot more in there than what it looks like. As soon as it starts to build up on the tool, you can see that you could actually make like a whole nother cupcake with it. So it's really important not to waste your materials. Also, just because you worked so hard to make it, you know, you wanna get the most out of all your effort to make this awesome frosting. So now that we're done with all of the mixing and transferring the frosting into the container, it's really important to clean all of your tools. That will give you extra longevity out of them and it's just good practice. So I'm just running them all over the little towel and getting all of the clay off of it. So you also want to clean your mixing bowl and get all of that clay out of there. That way you can use it again in the future. So you can do what I'm doing here and use the cotton towel or you can just use a paper towel. It, the key is, is that the towel needs to be dry. There shouldn't be any water on it because water isn't going to help you get this clean. It just needs to be dry and just keep running it over the inside until there's no more clay left. Okay, so that looks good, nice and clean. I wanted to show you a couple other things. So I've got these little airtight containers that work really great for holding the frosting. It keeps them, it keeps the frosting for a long time. I've had frosting for several years and they still work really great. If they're a little dry, you can just knead it a little bit with your fingers to rehydrate it and bring it back to life. But it's nice that you can do different shades. So like the light pink is actually a shade I mixed myself. Then I have an even lighter shade. And the nice thing is if you're using Fimo Soft, the colors stay true to what you mix it as. So it's not gonna change when you bake it in the oven. And you can really have a lot of fun. This one was a mint frosting that I made. I think I also used this to make some mint ice cream in another tutorial. So I'll show you how to do that. But it's just fun to get creative and come up with different frosting colors and just see what, what looks great. So like this one, for example, was chocolate. I just used the same Fimo Brown that we used for the cupcake base in this video. And then I also created peanut butter. So it doesn't have to be frosting. If it has the same behavior and look and feel as other things, then use the same techniques you learned in this video to make other really fun stuff. So for example, peanut butter, you can put that on polymer, polymer clay bread. I also had a lot of fun making some mashed potatoes for a little dinner meal thing I was making out of clay. But again, like the same technique can be used for all sorts of things. You just wanna get the same look and feel. So now we're gonna move into the next lesson, creating the hardware. When it comes to creating the hardware, what we're going to do is create a certain shape that we're going to stick inside the frosting. And I'll show you how to stick that into the frosting when we get there. But for this part of the, of the course, I just want you to look at this shape and see how it's an open eight shape. It looks like an eight, but it has an opening at the end. So to get that shape, what we're gonna do is use our round nose pliers and take some wire. It's up to you what size gauge you wanna use for wire if you want it to be really stiff or really pliable. But just pop the wire in there and start turning it around the round nose pliers. So you can see I've wrapped it around one of the rounded edges of the pliers. So that's the closed end. Now we're gonna make the open end. So I'm pinching the wire 
right where the clothes part starts and I'm wrapping it around in the opposite direction. And you can see we're starting to get that eight, that number eight. And I'll just push the wires so that you can get more of a better seal. So you see we've got that open eight. We just have a whole bunch of extra wire left over and that's okay. That's where we're gonna use the wire cutters for and we're just gonna snip that. So snip it in a spot where you'll still have a hook because the whole point is to hook this into the frosting to get a better seal. So you can see on the other one that I made, the hook is a bit long. So I think I'm gonna just trim that up so that way it's easier to hook that into the frosting. So now I've got these two pieces of hardware. Sometimes they get a little bit like crinkled when you work with it. So if that's the case, you really wanna make it flat. And that's where I like using my flat end pliers where I can just press it down and make sure that everything is as even and as flat as possible. It just makes it look more professional when you're done. And it's also going to make it a lot easier to work with when you're trying to put that into the frosting. So I wanna show you what you actually created. I've got a finished cupcake here, and you can see that little loop sticking out. That is the top of your open eight hardware that you made, and the hook is buried down deep inside the frosting doing its job. So when you have that, now you can add jump rings and turn it into whatever you like. So let's move into our next lesson, cupcake decorations. So to make the little decoration, it's a tiny little heart on the top of the cupcake. What you're going to need is a pasta maker. I set mine to setting three. And as you can see in this little description here, it will explain what my settings are because not all pasta makers have the same settings. Some setting one is the thinnest, others setting seven is the thinnest, some have different settings. So in order for you to make sure that you're rolling your clay out, at the same setting as what I'm rolling my clay out for these decorations. I have a little thing here to explain it in further detail. And then to punch out the little heart shape, I have this very, very small Kemper cutter and then obviously clay in whatever color you want the decoration to be. So let's roll out the clay. And we have this tiny, thin little piece of clay. You don't need a big piece because these decorations are really small. And then using the cutter, we're going to just punch out some little heart shapes. So that looks good. I've got five little hearts. I always try to make them in bulk. Um, I figure if I'm gonna go through the effort, might as well get a few extra hearts out of it. And here you can see I've made a lot of decorations. Some are hearts, some are little things I've hand sculpted. You can just, after you bake them, they can all just live in a little Ziploc and then you've got a bunch of options when you go to make all of your different cupcakes. So when you go to bake these little hearts, they really only need about five minutes in the oven. You're just trying to firm them up so that they're easier to work with. And then they'll actually get a proper bake when everything goes in the oven at the end. As you can see on this little piece of parchment, cutting with those little cutters, sometimes it leaves polymer clay residue on the parchment. And that kind of drives me crazy because I like to work on clean surfaces. So to get that off of there, just use a piece of uncured clay and gently rub it over the, the clay that's on the parchment. It's important that this, this piece of parchment has not gone into the oven because otherwise that'll be all crunchy. But if you get it before it goes into the oven, you can just remove that and then you'll have a nice smooth clean working surface that you can use again and again. 
and it's good practice to always clean your tools as soon as you're finished using them so I'm just gonna clean this little Kemper cutter and we're good to go now we're gonna move into the lesson of putting it all together okay so now we get to do the fun stuff so I'm going to put a piece of cardboard on my baker's wheel a piece of parchment and that's going to be my working surface I've got my little mold with my baked cupcake in there. It's important to make sure that that cooled before you go start using it, which it has, so we'll set that there. And then we're going to need tweezers, a toothpick, that little piece of hardware that we made, that open eight, the frosting that we wanna put on the cupcake, some sprinkles, and a little scoop for the sprinkles. It's really important to get all of these items set up before you start working with it, because once you start working with that cupcake, there's no going back. You can't be reaching for tools, or you're gonna end up getting frosting on something or drop your cupcake, and it's gonna be a huge mess. So pre-set up is key in this lesson. <laughs> so we're also gonna need that tiny little heart decoration. And I think I'm going to add an extra toothpick just to be safe because sometimes they break. I also want my towel to clean my hands or my equipment. Okay, so now let's break into this frosting that we just made. And I'm going to actually hold the cupcake base in my left hand. And as far as adding the frosting, I'm going to use a toothpick as my applicator. The wood in the toothpick is fantastic because the polymer clay frosting, it doesn't like to stick quite as much to the wood, so it allows you to work with it a little bit easier than if you were going to use a metal tool or something else. So I'm just gonna press down on the base and then twirl it so that it will help let go of the toothpick. And then just start pressing it down and pushing the toothpick around so that you can get a nice good seal with that frosting. So while I'm pressing this frosting down onto the cupcake base, I'm also thinking a little bit ahead, like what would look good here? Should there be a swish or a lump of frosting or should there be an indentation? And using that toothpick, I'm manipulating the clay frosting to get the look that I want. So it's not just about getting a good seal, you just wanna think ahead, what would look good here in this instance? So this is looking really good but the cupcake frosting is still a little flat and we need to be able to fit that hook into the frosting. So we're gonna actually add a little more frosting to create a taller peak and that way it'll be easier to stick that hook in there. Applying frosting to frosting can be tricky, but again, if you just twirl the toothpick, it helps it to let go so that you can start molding and you won't just rip the frosting back off of the top. So I'm going to keep working on adding this frosting to the existing frosting that I had and just blending it in really well and creating all the little indentations and swishes so that it looks realistic. Okay, so that's looking really good. Now what we want to do is add in our hardware. So using the tweezers, I'm going to pick up the hardware. I'm actually gonna grab it by the loop. And I like to kinda pick it up. So I actually place it on my pinky, which is kinda weird, I know, but it's a great staging place so I can make sure I'm grabbing it from the right spot and capturing it in a way that I'm not gonna end up with the tweezers dipping into the frosting. So I just wanna hook that into the frosting and it is gonna move it around a little bit, but that's okay, we can adjust that using our, our toothpick. So I just wanna make sure that it's hooked in there really good. And then using the toothpick, I'm going to add a little bit more frosting 
just to kind of wrap it in there and get a better seal around the hardware. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. I think I think this frosting is just the way I want it to be. Yep, I like it from all angles. So now what we're going to do is attach the little heart-shaped sprinkle. So using my tweezers, I'm just gonna pick it up. And again, I like using my pinky. It just makes it easier sometimes to pick it up. Um, I'm just grabbing the edge of the heart though, just that top little edge, that way the tweezers don't touch the frosting. If they touch the frosting, they tend to kind of pull the frosting out of place because it's metal, so it's really important that it doesn't touch anything. And then I'm just going to adjust everything, make sure that it all looks good. Yep. And now this is probably going to be one of the most challenging parts, is you slide the tweezers in to capture the cupcake base and then gently set it down and pull the tweezers away. So now what we wanna do is clean off that toothpick that we used for the frosting and just get any remaining frosting off the toothpick by spinning it around in the container. And then we're going to put the lid on the frosting because we're going to move into the sprinkle stage and sometimes the sprinkles get everywhere and the last thing you wanna do is get them inside your frosting container because if you get them in there, they're never coming out. They'll be in there forever. So before we start working with these little seed beads, you could just work directly on your baker's wheel, but I actually like using the cookie sheet that I'm going to bake everything on because if some of the little beads fall, which they tend to fall off of the cupcake as you're working with applying them, then they don't run all over the place and you don't have a seed bead mess everywhere. I'm going to just very carefully slide the parchment off of the cardboard. And now we're ready to add the sprinkles. I've got my little seed bead container, which again, on this cookie sheet, they can spill. It's okay, because I can easily just put them back in the container. And I got these seed beads, I think, off of eBay or Etsy or somewhere, but they're really inexpensive. They're actually used for nail art, but they work really great in polymer clay as sprinkles. So you can see, I don't know if you can see it, it's so small. I only grab like maybe four or five sprinkles at a time. If you use a huge scoop of them, like that, you're gonna have a huge mess if you dump that on your cupcake. And then the placement is gonna be really haphazard. It's not gonna look as nice because you're just gonna have a clump of sprinkles here and then a clump of sprinkles there instead of some well thought out sprinkle placement. I'm just gonna keep adding the sprinkles where I feel like it needs a little more sprinkles. Again, nice to have a baker's wheel because I can turn it without impacting my sculpture. And that way I can make sure that all sides of this look really cute. I got a couple sprinkles that went rogue, so I'm just gonna capture those very gently and get them back into the container for future use. Okay, great. So as soon as you're done with the sprinkles, put the lid on them and put them away. There's nothing worse than accidentally bumping that container and having sprinkles everywhere. So once we've put the sprinkles on, we actually need to press them into place. So I'm gonna use this little tiny toothpick, it has a nice little point on it, and gently press each individual sprinkle 
very carefully into the frosting. I don't want to push it too hard. I don't want it to disappear. I just want to get a better seal around that frosting so that after you bake it, the sprinkles will stay in place. So once I have all those sprinkles pushed into the frosting, then I'm going to pop this in the oven. I usually bake my cupcakes for about 25 minutes according to whatever the temperature setting is on the polymer clay instructions on the package. And then we can move into adding the glaze. So now we're going to add the glaze to our cupcake. So this has been baked already. I've let it completely cool. And I'm going to use this tiny fine tip paintbrush to add the triple thick glaze to the little heart decoration on the top. It's important to only use a little bit of glaze. Less is more in this instance. You just wanna get nice, even coverage but you don't wanna glob it all on there. Perfect. So now we're gonna move into the next lesson, adding the hardware. So what we wanna do is add a jump ring to our little loop at the top and that way we can turn this into whatever kind of jewelry we want. So using the pliers I'm going to open up this jump ring and it's important that when you open it you don't pull it apart. You twist like you see I'm doing here in this video. That way you can easily close it and you're not going to deform that jump ring. So let's loop it in there on the hook and then using the pliers again we're going to close the jump ring. And there we go. Now in the next lesson, we'll move into the finishing touches. Now it's time to add the paint. So you can see I have the tiniest little drop in my paint bowl. You don't need much, this is a very small cupcake. And when I paint, I like to hold the cupcake upside down. It's just easier to work with. I can make sure that I don't get paint all over my fingers. And then using my little dotting tool, I'm just going to press a tiny little polka dot of paint. And then if the paint starts to get thick or dry, just clean off your dotting tool on the paper towel and get another dot of paint. Another advantage to doing it upside down is you get these cute little heart shapes, which was unintentional. Again, I just held the cupcake, whatever felt more comfortable, but it actually made these cute little heart shapes. So when you flip it right side up, instead of just a plain polka dot, you end up with heart shaped polka dots, which matches the little heart shaped decoration on the top of the cupcake. And I think it makes it look extra cute. Okay, so I'm going to add this fine little dot of paint here. Perfect. And it looks good. We've got dots all the way around. And now I'm going to set this to dry. And we can move into our wrap up lesson. Congratulations, you finished this course. Hopefully now you have a better understanding of polymer clay and learn some new skills along the way.